we, we discussed um, uh, a number of environmental and sustainability issues. He um, was aware, for example, of the Zero Carbon Bill and the National had supported that. We also talked about the future of the Commonwealth uh, and the Pacific uh, and issues of trade and uh, at the end I was able to give him uh, a nice little pot of honey uh, from my electorate. Uh, in fact, um, uh, coming from uh, Mount Monganui Golf Course uh, where um, I think from Pudakawa trees uh, the honey uh, has literally been, been pollinated. What did he have to say sort of about the future of the Commonwealth and moving forward? Where well, look, he stand on obviously uh, he's very aspirational and uh, he is the head of Chogham, um, has a range of views on those things, things that um, he can do and add value. Um, so it was a really good conversation. Anything that surprised you at all? Uh, look, I think just the, the extent to which uh, His Royal Highness uh, knows about New Zealand has quite a deep sense of it. And I suppose in a sense it shouldn't be a surprise. He's been here many times uh, and is um, uh, uh, well averse in, in our issues. And I think he has a great regard for our country. What's I think position on New Zealand becoming a republic? Uh, I don't support it. I've said before I'm a... Um, in quotes, reluctant uh, monarchist. And what I mean by that is I think um, going to a different system uh, would require a lot of change. We would have to, for example, think through issues of a written constitution, uh, formally where we place the Treaty of Waitangi and these sorts of issues. And for those reasons, I think we have a system that overall serves us well uh, and would be better than the, the uncertainty, uh, the cost, uh, and the issues associated with, with change. Can you discuss anything about our relationship post Brexit? And what do you talk about with regards to the future of this? And not really, other than that, I mentioned that um, in relation to the Commonwealth, uh, I'm a great supporter of it and I see great opportunities for it to rejuvenate uh, in coming years. And I say that because, look, um, uh, regardless of one's view of Brexit and indeed whether or not it happens. What is also true is that uh, uh, as the government of Britain seeks out trade deals and so on, it does allow us uh, as New Zealand to um, get an emphasis back on our, our country. Hey, thanks very much. How would you go in there and what did you talk about? Oh, um, look, I'll, I'll first just say it's obviously the practices, not to not to give those fulsome, full disclosures around uh, uh, what's discussed in, in meetings with members of the royal family. But you know, what I can say is that um, uh, Prince of Wales is very well informed uh, about New Zealand, um, uh, what, what's been happening in recent times in New Zealand. Uh, and we had a fantastic exchange about issues particularly pertaining to the environment. He's always been interested in those areas well ahead of his time in his knowledge around climate change uh, and really um, fantastic to have a conversation about what's happening in New Zealand on that front. Mm. So I remember just said he gave a pot of honey to the prince. Was there anything that you offered to him as well? Yes, yeah, just a, a couple of personal gifts, one of, one of which was um, planting 10 native trees on his behalf, given his interest, of course, in, in forestry and um, the restoration of native forests. I thought that would be a, a fitting gift. So there'll be 10 trees out there in his name. Anywhere specific? Oh, I don't have the specific place necessarily they'll be. I can find that out, though, but at the moment... They will Probably be not the west coast of the South Island. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> We've got a plan to get. Well, plenty of natives down there. <laughs>